Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center. Hope you're all staying safe out there. I'm in the office today because we get to look at all the coolest new knives that have hit our shelves in the last week. Let's check them out. All right, we're going to start with some limited edition stuff. And the first is from Swiss Army. This is the Victorinox 2020 Limited Edition Hunter Pro Alox. Now, for those of you out there who always complain about uh, Victorinox doesn't always use the best steel, what we have here is actually a damascus steel blade. So if you're looking for a high performance blade on a Swiss Army knife, this is the way to go because you get a powder metallurgy construction, a lot more edge retention than their base model of stainless steel. As a result though, this is quite a bit more expensive than most Swiss Army knives. Most of their damascus steel models are. This one comes in at $400. Now these are only going to be around for this year and they're only making 6,000 of these. In fact, uh, it may sound like a high number, but for a company like Victorinox, it has a huge broad reach. It's a lot, uh, a, lot, a lot smaller than you think it might be when you consider the entire market that they're serving. They are all individually serialized right here on the back. You can see this one is 2679 out of 6,000. Beyond the limited nature of this knife, it's still a really cool locking, uh, back locking knife. Uh, if you don't want to spend this much, there are, uh, you know, the base models are significantly cheaper. Uh, some of the Alox models of this come in under a hundred bucks with their standard steel. That Alox, of course, is aluminum. We've got a copper brown color on this particular limited edition. That strong back lock, versatile drop point shape going on, about uh, almost four inches in fact. So it's a good size, carries nice and slim too, but if you want more grip, Again, there are cheaper options that have some wood or, or rubberized grips if you want this design in a more uh, kind of user-friendly uh, price point and materials. Now, probably even more anticipated than that Swiss Army knife is this new limited edition Buck 110 Slim. And this one comes in a bit more affordable, coming in about 165 right now. This sees a number of upgrades over their standard Buck 110 Slim or their 110 Slim Pro, which comes with either Micarta or G10 and an S30V blade. Here we've got carbon fiber and S35VN on the blade steel. These are limited as well. There's only 500 and this one is 227. They're serialized here on the back. Both of these coming in uh, right around the middle of the run, which is kind of interesting. They've also changed up the pocket clip a little bit on this one versus the standard model, which has a, uh, a broad clip like this, but it's deep carry. On this one instead, we see a couple of standoffs, a few posts right here, a bit of a more premium treatment overall to that pocket clip. It is not reversible though, so if you're buying this with the intent to carry it, you're not going to be able to it, uh, switch it around to the left side. Um, that's the only thing that makes this not really uh, as ambidextrous as those other versions. All the other spec wise though are very similar. You got that same blade length, about three and three quarters of an inch, slightly different blade shape than the classic 110s, not the new 110 slims, but the classic 110s of course had a, a more aggressive scoop on the clip point whereas we've got a straight clip point on this blade here. It's gonna carry nice and slim in the pocket. It's gonna look really classy when you pull it out. Uh, this could be your, uh, your church buck knife if you, so, if you wanna call it that. And it opens easily thanks to those one-handed thumb studs. That's not all too. It actually comes with a, uh, a limited edition box as well, which is quite, ni quite nice, I should say. See, you can tell the box says limited edition and the rubber band is limited edition as well. The knife inside is also limited edition, but there you go. Nice little case to go with. All right, I'm gonna go more expensive again. Um, it's actually the most expensive we've looked at so far. I'll get the real premium stuff uh, out here at the beginning and have some more affordable stuff after. We've got new versions of the Wii Knife Company Arrakis, of course, designed by Elijah Isham. This version right here comes in at 663. Now where this differs from some of the old versions, uh, previously existing versions, is we have a damascus steel blade here as well, uh, kind of similar to that Victorinox from earlier. This is their Heimskringla pattern. I'm probably saying that wrong, but that's okay. Of course, if you wanna spend less money, you certainly can. You can get this with an M390 blade, and those start a little bit over 300, so about half the price really of this version. Now what's really cool about this knife though, or at least it's most um, it's kind of distinctive feature is what we're calling a split integral handle. You do, it's not a technical integral handle. It's not one piece wrapped around, but if I hold this over, it may look like a backspacer, but this piece of titanium right here actually extends all the way up into the lock bar release right there. And then the rest of the handles here are two separate pieces of titanium. And that's what actually houses the pivot and then locks into place on these. So it's kind of a, a three piece handle, but it, 
interlocks and overlaps and you get some cool different effects going on. This version especially, there's a carbon fiber with brass uh, stone washed version, but this blue and brass both with a stone washed finish on it, I think looks really, really cool and definitely eye popping against that Damasteel blade. And it's definitely got a distinctive shape. I'd say it's more about style than usability, but if you are going to use it, you've got a nice dropped, uh, dropped edge here. It's a little bit below the, uh, the edge of the handle itself. That's his edge below flipper tab, one of those kind of signature Elijah Isham uh, design features. It's going to work quite well, but it looks really cool. A name like Arrakis, of course, for fans of the Dune series, you've got kind of a sandwormy kind of look here. Really badass knife. The flipping action is on point, as you'd expect. We do have ball bearings in the pivot and even a pretty cool Timascus pivot collar there on the back. All around, it's just a very premium and very eye-catching design. All right, next we've got another Wii, but significantly more affordable than that Arrakis. This is the new Justin Lundquist designed angst flipper. This particular one comes in about 157. There's a few different materials going on here. We've got a carbon fiber handle with G10 inlays. There's also a version with a, a white G10 handle with black G10 inlays, and that one comes in a bit cheaper, about 140 or so. And there's a couple other versions you can choose from in addition to that as well. Blade length is just over three inches. It's S35 VN steel. And despite the, the look of a dagger here, this is only a single edged knife. They're not, it's not double edged here on the top. Couple reasons though why that might actually be uh, very useful for you day to day. Now I'm a real proponent of a drop point. That's what most of my EDCs tend to, uh, to gravitate towards in terms of blade shape. But with a profile like this, of course you do have a very acute point. It's gonna pierce really well. It's gonna be great for things like opening packages and that sort of thing. But with this dagger like profile, essentially you've got a, uh, the, the flat grind to the center of the blade and a flat swedge going back towards the spine. So you have this really nice octagonal cross section. The thickest point is right there in the middle. And what's nice about that, because you don't have so much drag on the spine, this is really great for going around corners, if you're cutting shapes out of things, any kind of tight maneuvering, you're gonna have more efficient cutting and more efficient uh, sort of transitions, if you will, with this type of blade shape. It's gonna be very agile. And the whole knife backs that up too. It's a very lightweight, knife, particularly with this carbon fiber handle. Let me see what we're, uh, the weight here is about 1.8 ounces. That's Benchmade bug out territory. If you're familiar with that knife, ultralight favorite for sure. And this I think is poised to be very similar. Got a liner lock housed in there to keep things secure. Nice milled pocket clip. It is a single position. This is a right side tip up only. And it flips really nicely. Again, it's a Wii. It's got ball bearings. It's quite nice. With these sort of double quillion uh, or double guard right here, Actually, you could do a few different opening methods. You could kind of, well, I tried to front flipper it there for the first time on camera and it didn't work very well. So maybe you can do it. It didn't work out so well for me. Uh, in addition to that, we thought maybe uh, trying, to, uh, trying to pocket deploy this kind of like an Emerson wave. It's a little bit difficult. It's a little finickier than some of the other things. You can get it to work, but not uh, real smoothly. And part of that's due to the fact that it's not really a big hook right here. It kind of slants out. So again, your mileage may vary on that. But either way, I think this angst is a really cool EDC design, really aggressive, but it's going to be really useful too. All right, coming up next from the budget subsidiary of Wii Knife Company, we have a new blade from Civivi. This is the Exarch Front Flipper. This may look pretty familiar at first. Let me hold this knife up here. On the bottom here, I've got the Civivi Chronic, and on top we have this new Exarch. And the, basically the only difference, or the biggest difference I should say, is the opening mechanism. Blade lengths are, uh, are, are the same, handles are identical, blade shape is a little bit different, but rather than having a conventional flipper like the Chronic, the Exarch has, as the name would suggest, a front flipper. Now personally, I find this particular front flipper pretty easy to, to operate actually. I'm not always the best at it, but this one is very smooth. Again, ball bearings in the pivot. It's a Civivi that's, you know, they kind of carry that through from the, uh, from the, the Wii Knife Company stuff, but at a, a lower price, of course. This particular one is the higher end version of the Exarch. It comes in at just over 80 bucks, has a Damasteel blade, or no, sorry, not Damasteel. This is a Damascus blade that's based on 9CR18 MOV. So it should give you a roughly a 440C type of performance. And the handles are black G10 with a carbon fiber uh, laminated layer on the top end right there. Very neutral handle shape, but if you don't like the fancier version, you can get plain Jane uh, G10 versions. I think we have black, blue, and gray at this point in time. 
those come in less than 50 bucks right now. Now personally, I have always felt that the Chronic was a great uh, gentleman's knife, especially in this fancier version here. Uh, blade shape on the new X-Arc though, I kind of like that a little bit better. As I mentioned earlier, I am a drop point fan. In addition to that, the edge itself on both of them, actually as I'm looking at them here, they are pretty identical. You've got uh, just a subtle hint of curve here back at the heel of the blade. It's not completely straight. Very, very hard to see though. It's almost completely straight. But you've got a really nice slicing profile going on here. You got a hollow grind to keep it nice and thin behind the edge. And then when folded up, the blade almost completely disappears within the pocket there. Again, great gentleman's carry, great for taking uh, just about anywhere, being very unobtrusive. Blade length is about three and a quarter inches, so it's not gonna be under that three inch length. But you've got a deep carry pocket clip here. It is reversible to either side, holds it nice and deep. And then you've got a, uh, a pass through here at the back for a lanyard hold that's buried into the handle a little bit. This and the, uh, the Chronic both are some of their uh, most considered designs, I would say, that we've seen from Civivi so far, definite winners. If you're looking for a kind of similar vibe, but you want something that's less than three inches, this, uh, this knife might be up your alley. It's a new Boker Plus. It's the Lancer 42 from Serge Penchenko. You can definitely see some of his, uh, the Penchenko bean DNA in this particular knife. Blade length is about two and three quarters of an inch. We've got D2 steel, stone washed finish. And this version right here comes in at about 75 bucks. And that is the version with Coco Bolo wood on the front. There's also uh, some G10, carbon fiber, a number of different uh, variants that you can pick. And the price ranges a little bit depending on which option you pick. But I really like this particular Coco Bolo one. It goes a long way to kind of toning down uh, the aggressiveness of you know a knife. You know, some people, let's, let's be honest, freak out when you pull out a knife. So at least this is a little uh, classic uh, looking, I would say. And it is a stainless steel frame lock but it's not a flipper, it doesn't have a thumb stud, you've got a traditional slip joint type of nail nick there at the back, but it doesn't have this, the typical kind of slip joint uh, resistance when you go to open it, since you're not fighting the back spring. But again, really nice gentleman's knife, comes in under three inches, comes in very affordably priced right now, looks classy. Got a little bit of a, a lanyard hole there at the back if you want to accessorize. Single position pocket clip on this one though, with this stone washed piece right here. All right, I've got another new Boker Plus here, and we're gonna kind of keep in the, the gentleman's knife theme going here. This is the new Genios folder. This one comes in about 135, and the materials are a little more premium. First, we have a titanium handle construction with carbon fiber inlays on both sides. There's no pocket clip, as you can see. Um, this is a lockback, but we get a, a small leather pocket slip so that you can carry it easily that way. The back lock itself is quite nice. You've got a crown spine here, makes it nice and comfortable. And that continues onto the blade itself as well. And that blade is VG10, comes in just over three inches. So again, not quite under that three inch mark. But what's interesting to me about this particular blade is the hollow grind that they've put on here. It's kind of not like any hollow grind uh, or most hollow grinds any, out there anyway that I've ever seen. Rather than being sort of a continuous a uh, hollowed out curve like this, it rather abruptly comes down right here at the top of the grind and then sort of shallows out so that this entire section up until eh, probably just over halfway up the blade is very, very, very thin in fact. So it should slice very well there right behind the edge, especially if you're not doing like long cuts through material where those shoulders might, might start to get in the way. So you kind of get a little bit of the strength from that spine there, but you have a just razor sharp, wickedly thin blade to cut stuff with. Now, if that wasn't enough, there is another kind of hidden trick up its sleeve. You'll notice here that the blade is fairly tall, taller in fact than most of the handle. More, normally when you have a back lock, let's look at this, uh, this buck as an example. The locking mechanism, the back spring, actually takes up a fair bit of space inside the handle because you need that tension from the, the leaf spring itself. They've got a patented system going on in here. It's, I admit, it's gonna be really hard to see on camera, I'm sure, but you've got some internally mounted springs that stick out from the sides of the handles themselves, and that provides the pressure. Let's them keep that lock bar really, really thin so that the knife can close up pretty darn thin, in fact. It's a cool little feature. It's a cool little blade. It's really comfortable too. I didn't mention you've got uh, the handles here are contoured. It's gonna be just a really cool gentleman's knife uh, with sort of an alternative blade shape that kind of sheep's foot Warncliffe profile somewhere, eh, somewhere in between the two. Really cool little guy right here. 
All right, one more Boker to show you today, and it's not a Boker Plus. This is actually an American-made Boker. Not German, not South America, not China at all. This is, in fact, an automatic version of the Lucas Burnley Quaken, and it's made by Protec. The price on this particular version comes in at 216, but the way it differs from the standard versions, of course, you can see we've got some really interesting artwork here. And this is actually a piece by Frank Frazetta that's embedded in the aluminum. Frazetta, of course, is one of the, you know, one of the most influential sci-fi and fantasy artists of the 20th century, and this particular piece is his Death Dealer 3. Now, being a pro tech, of course, we've got insane automatic action. Always been a fan of that really strong side push button action from ProTech. We've got 154 cm steel, about three and a half inches with a black finish, aluminum handles. It's still that same great uh, Quaken design that people love so much these days. All right, next we've got a new Balasong from Bear Ops. Of course, Bear Ops being the uh, slightly higher end version of some Bear and Son stuff. This is the Bear Song 8, by the I, 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 yeah, Bear Song 8 coming in at 106. Blade Steel's 154 CM, and we've got a black Cerakote uh, stainless steel handles, and you can get that blade in a uh, drop point or the Tonto you see here. Now, as far as the action goes, I think this is really good. Definitely a lot better than most other bears I've personally flipped. Now, the pivots are actually ball bearings, but they feel almost like bronze washers and how just very stable they are. There's no side to side wiggle that I can determine whatsoever and they float very nicely. Pardon my, my left handedness there. I can do open and close. That's about all I got though. But it, it feels really nice. You've got a crown spine here. So if you're, you know, you're doing your tricks, you're not gonna have to fight the edge of the spine too much. You do have a pocket clip here that is removable and reversible. And that comes on the, uh, the safe handle there. And we've got a spring, uh, spring retained pocket or uh, latch here, I should say. When it's open, it does hold it out here. And then when you close it up, you're not gonna get like that bench made kind of squeeze spring latch action, but it is gonna stay out of the way when you're flipping. Of course, since you've got that pocket clip there, if you're able to EDC a balisong, this would be a pretty good option because you've got American made, pretty good materials, pretty good steel, all for just over a hundred bucks. This is 106 right now. All right, just a couple more this week. Uh, I've got the new TAC Raise 4 from Tops, and this comes in at just under 100 bucks. We're about 98 right now. We've got a few different versions. We've got this particular blade shape here, which is kind of a recurve Tonto profile. We've also got one that's a little more, uh, little more reminiscent of a classic straight razor. This is not a straight razor. This is an EDC design. This is probably not uh, something you're going to want to shave with, but it is a non-locking folder, so you're you know, not going to have to worry about the legalities of a lock. And it even comes with a nice leather case here for your belt that that'll go right into right there. Now, as far as the materials go, the handle is green canvas micarta. And you can see they're bolted together with some standoffs here. Really nice texture going on. It's a little bit on the matte side. It's not super polished, so you're going to have a fair amount of grip. And they're thick enough that you've got a full grip once you open that knife up. Now, as far as that opening action goes, you can, of course, do it with your thumb. You can kind of roll that back or you can do it two-handed like I did at first. Now this is kind of a friction folder, but I'd say technically not because the, the handles themselves aren't providing any friction onto the tang of the blade to hold it shut. You're just dealing with sort of the, uh, the tightness of the pivot that they put on there. And of course your, uh, your hand itself to hold the blade open while you're using it. You do have a little bit of a finger choil here. My fingers are a bit on the bigger side and they're a little tight there. But with that kind of grip, uh, with your finger right behind that edge there and your rest of your hand here, it is gonna feel fairly secure when you're doing your utility work with the blade. The blade itself is actually 1095 carbon steel. Kind of an interesting choice. I would have expected maybe a stainless, but I like it. I like the uh, finish they've put on here. It's got sort of a, uh, it's, it's almost like they um, oxidized it a little bit and then stonewashed it. It's not quite a full like black stonewash. It's somewhere in between a black stone wash and your standard stone wash finish. It looks pretty darn cool. If you don't want Micarta, there are some G10 versions of these knives available if you want something different, and the prices on those are, uh, are right about the same, I think, too. But if you're looking for something different and just a little bit cool, these have certainly been uh, highly anticipated. Get them now. Right, we're gonna end on a couple of smaller knives now. We've got a new version of the uh, Spiderbug, Spiderbug, Spiderco Ladybug 3 coming in at about 60 bucks. 
The Ladybug, of course, is one of the kind of greatest keychain knives of all time, I think. We got about a two inch blade, and this is the first in some of the, uh, the new upcoming releases from Spyderco to feature a blue FRN handle with K390 steel. Now this is, this is not M390, it is uh, made by the same company, so it does have some relation there, but it is a very different steel. This is a uh, high speed tool steel, it's not stainless, but it has uh, very high wear resistance and pretty good toughness as well. And on this particular blade from Spyderco, being a very thin uh, blade stock and very high flat grind, it's going to be a great little slicer. And even though you've only got uh, less than two inches of edge, it should last a fairly long time since you've got that super steel behind it. Apart from that, you've got that FRN with Spyderco's bi-directional texturing. It's not as, uh, as heavy as it would be on some of their full-size knives like the Delica or the uh, Endura, but you've still got a good amount of grip there. Nice mid-mounted back lock with that David Boy dent right there. It's going to help you find it easily uh, if you're not looking right at the knife when you go to close it. And it's also going to prevent you from accidentally like pressing too hard when you're using the knife, which I think on the, the uh, this particular knife is more important than on some of the other versions because, at least for me, I've got big fingers, as I said. My thumb gets kind of close to that lock bar release right there. But I actually have one of these, an older version in a VG10, and I've never really felt in danger because one, you've got that lock right, or that dent right there. As far as grip, it is, you know, it's a little knife. You've only got about two and a half fingers there, but of course you've got a pretty generously sized lanyard hole. It's not like super tiny. You could fit paracord through there if you want. So you could make a fob and give your, uh, your last finger something to hold on to if you want a little bit more grip. But it's really cool. And as I said, this kind of, this blue FRN with K390, uh, is they're going to be doing that on a lot of their lightweight models. Uh, we actually just uh, had some new models revealed just the other day. Uh, we'll make sure to leave links to the new Spydercos as well, so if you want to get a pre-order in on some of those, you can. All right, finally for this week, another fixed blade, or I say another fixed blade, finally a fixed blade. Oh, I'm going into fixed blade withdrawal. We've got a new Hinderer neck knife. This is a new version of his LP1 with a Warncliffe blade. Price on this is 175. It's made in America. We've got S35 VN steel, about two inches again, kind of like that uh, Spider Go. Let's hold that up. Uh, yeah, yeah. Good bit of edge though, on this uh, for such a small knife on this hinderer. S35 VN, like I said, we've got a nice stone washed finish. All the edges are eased over, so it's not going to be sharp to hold on to. You've got a bit driver there in the middle if you needed to do something. Just make sure the sheath is on if you're uh, using it. As such. Kydex sheath, breakaway ball chain included, and the whole, uh, whole spacing down here is very smartly done. Uh, the two closest holes, you could fit a small tech lock, and the outside holes, you could fit a large tech lock if you wanted to carry this on your belt. If you like the design though, but don't like the Warncliffe, of course, there's a drop point version of this also available. We'll, leave, we'll make sure to leave links to both of those when we uh, put a link down there in the description for you. All right, so that's all the new stuff I've got to show you this week. As I mentioned right there, we will leave links in the description for all of these knives here if you want to get your hands on any of them. What were your favorites though? Make sure to let us know down in the comments. And if you head over to Knife Center, make sure you sign up for our Knife Rewards program while you're there, because if you're going to buy one of these knives, you might as well earn some free money that you can spend on your next ones. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center. I hope you're all staying safe, sane, and sanitary out there. See you next time.